as well. Lovely bit of control that is. Cheers for that. Just pause it there. What would be the problem in steering? And is it uh, needed? I can just back up. Straight yeah, line. Okay, yeah. Always think about the route you're going to take before you take yeah. it and make life easy. Let that gap get bigger. That white car's going to yeah, break it. So it'll be one step ahead of the rest. Road on the right, we're gonna take. Can you see it? Yeah. So the speed limit is 60 still national, no signs with it. No. So it's got to be the ease off, ease off, ease off. It'll be too quick. The, the, the big consideration is, have we still got a place where we could stare out the way? A place no, where because there's no middle lane, so it's too narrow. It's too narrow, yeah. So your speed wouldn't match the conditions, if that yeah. makes sense there. So before you accelerate when you're entering your road, just make that assessment. So it's second frame right here, the first frame. Yeah. I think so at the moment, because every time you ease off, it's giving you that yeah. engine brake and it tilts about earlier. that is. Cheers for that. Right, what did you say? Yeah, in the diesel it felt... Um, it feels like if I... Like the last one we were leaving, it felt quite quick because um, even though I didn't have my foot on the gas, it felt like it was, felt like it was speeding up. Because in the diesel I would just like have the clutch down pretty much and kind of just rolls. But it, I, I guess it goes back to the you saying that the deal with lower speeds better. I don't, I'm so really sorry, I don't know what, I don't I know, know what you mean. I don't know how to it. Do you mean when we just turned in here, and, yeah. you, went, and you went to first gear, yeah. as you turned in? Yeah, I'm not sure, uh, oh, I mean when I'm going kind of around the car park, in first gear. Oh yeah. Do I just have my clutch down at all times, unless I'm speeding up slightly, or... Oh, I see, right, yeah. You, yeah, the way to control it, because if you brake in first gear, it goes all, yeah. it's like it's going to stall, isn't it? But you, you can brake a torch for any more, mm -hmm. it starts doing that. So what you want to do is you want to be just pressing the clutch in every so often. And, and, and but just, not all the way down. Not all the way, because you'll just, if it's downhill, you'll pick up speed. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I would do. And if the car park's big enough, 
well, if the clutch is up but there's no gas, you could just use tick over. Mm. Do you know what I mean by tick over? That speed that I'm almost wanting to change the second, is it? No, it's where you just come up off the clutch and you oh. would engage you'd engage that new gear and the car would just you could put your feet on the floor if you wish to. You, the car would just keep rolling. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Do you know what I mean by that? It's something I use in slow moving traffic. I did a video approaching roundabouts recently. I think I saw it. It was about timing them. Timing, yeah. And mm. a lot of it was not really doing a lot with the feet. Just mm. Because they, they'll keep speeding up going on their gas. Well, there is no urgency to get on the gas to have to break the bait at the end. And if you want to interest in that video and if it's watching, we'll pop a uh, link up. Yeah, so that's what I do. Look to use tick over. If tick over's too quick, press the clutch in a bit. That's the only way to go slower than tick over. Because mm -hmm. first gear is your lowest gear, isn't it? For many roundabouts, at least I was taught, it was either you go through them in first gear, around five miles an hour, or second gear with clutch down, I believe it was, but I'm not sure if I'm right. correct. It's, mm -hmm. it's too rigid for me, that. I mean, some roundabouts, so many roundabouts. That, that one in Long Eaton we did today, that mini roundabout was, mm -hmm. was massive. There were two lanes on approach, on the one yeah. side. You wouldn't, um, you know, so it has to be based on what can I see on approach? How busy is it? How early can I see? What have I decided? Do I need more time? It mm -hmm. has to be that. It has to be everything has to be tailored for that day, those conditions and, do you know what I mean? So generally I would just say, Okay, they're smaller roundabouts, so probably third, probably, isn't going to be. But then again, I'd turn left at that mini roundabout in third that you did. Mm. I would have, yeah. Because you're turning left at it, aren't you? are not really going round the roundabout, which is a bit the awkward. The more recent one, you mean? The, one of the last ones we did? Yeah, where I said, oh, there was them three cars turning left, you could have gone. Oh, that one. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, I would approach in second as a general rule with a clutch up, but you know what I'd do? I'd do it early so that you know that little window at the end where they've got that extra time mm -hmm. you're just using tick over to carry you yeah. and it's the car will stay at the same speed same speed same speed and then if you wish to you can get on the gas and go mm -hmm. or if you don't want to clutch in change gear or brake or whatever it, whatever it uh, whatever is necessary mm -hmm. do you want me to get you using tick over a bit and guide you yeah, through it and just I think so, just to get a feel for what it is, and then you can start exploiting that a bit more. Yeah. I call first gear car park gear. To me, it's just a utility gear to get you moving, and you don't stay in it. It's not really for driving, but it is good for car parks. It keeps us slower. We turned in Colliers, that garden centre, mm -hmm. the last, you know, the place you pulled in earlier, in uh, second. How did that feel? Mm, super, super. Um, you can't manoeuvre and control it as good as I think. Mm. Bit dodgy there it was all loose gravel as well yeah. so a good job you slowed it down but yeah just and again the thing is with that is you're turning into a into a really quiet smaller car park off a more m busier road mm -hmm. so you might not want to go first like too early yeah a bit like the slip roads we'll use the car park to kind of or the turn in to protect us and we can do the rest of the, the reduction of the speed in that little section okay. as we're going in rather than being too slow and then do you see what I mean? Yeah. It's quite advanced stuff, but... Yeah, because I changed the to first gear on the road. Right. I, think was that, I, think we'd, I think we'd already turned in, but I think the trouble was you'd kind of... I think I'd have gone second... I can't say that because I can't remember how it was. But what I would do if it was me, I'd go second really early, make sure the clutch is up, hopefully trundle in in second gear, tick over. As I'm going in, clutch down first gear decide whether to bring that clutch up or not probably not just break mm -hmm. until I'll figure out you know which way I'm going on the car park and everything else mm -hmm. so yeah that's it really any thoughts no are you still learning yes good um, right so we'll get back onto those type of roads using it for the route back really and if, I, if I'm if I'm right in the way I take you I might get it wrong they'll be top they'll be smaller so we'll really have to make sure it, we can stop in time for the bends because if we don't yeah. there's no escape mm -hmm. it's gonna be a head-on situation if it's the one I'm thinking of but we'll see What would be the problem?
problem in steering? And is it uh, needed? Well, because I'm going to go with that. Like, that. Not, no, wait. I can just back up. Yeah. Straight okay, line. No, yeah. Always think about the route you're going to take before you take yeah. it. And make life easy. For some reason, my mind put cars back there. So <laughs> they're not cars. And if you steer there, the left tyre could... Yeah, exactly. And be really generous here. Go, keep going. Keep going. Imagine there's a car there. And then look over your right shoulder for the end of them lines. Imagine there's a car behind us in the other bays. Mm -hmm. So use the space. Right, now, if you just engage first gear, come off the gas and come off the clutch. That's it, just come off it all. Just cover them pedals, but don't press them. Why don't it like, slow down and stall eventually? Nothing. It won't speed up, it won't slow down. So now if I break a bit, then I have to slow down, right? Exactly. It's a useful tool to know. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, so I think it's almost the same, except I think a petrol car will be more sensitive. So yeah, I'm turning right. <coughs> So if you go second, don't accelerate, don't do anything, just come off them pedals, nothing behind us. Well, we're going uphill, so it's dropping a bit. It'll still, it'll still, it might sound like it's struggling a bit, but it'll still pull you. Mm -hmm. But I just want you to know that's a thing. And you can use that whenever you, you know, whenever you need. So you're like, I'm going to speed the traffic. Exactly. Slow more traffic. Exactly. Depending on the speed. Yeah. All gears will do it. Mm -hmm. It won't, it won't stall. Uh, I can't speak for really old cars because I don't know. I just yeah. don't know. But I think there's a lot of people that don't know that, don't understand that. And so when they're in slow moving traffic, they're always whizzing off really quick because they're sat in too much gas and then they keep accelerating and actually they don't need to. Does braking actually waste fuel as well? Braking? Yeah. Well, if you brake, that means you've got to use all that fuel to get back started again so the consequence of braking yes So on a dull day, I completely get where you're coming from. So the use of lights. So lights aren't to help you to see. What are they for? To kind of tell them, uh, tell others of your presence. Yeah, yeah to help. Approaching or especially around bends. To help you to be seen. Right, let's shift ourselves over to the left corner. Uh, That's better. <laughs> That's it, it's better. Right, we've got a sharp end coming up. So off the gas, third gear, clutch up. No braking should be needed. Just the engine braking, just a subtle amount of engine braking should be fine. Keeping fairly close this side in case something's whizzing through. That's it. Don't have to be as close to the left now because um, we can see. But then on that bend again, right? Yeah, we don't want the tyres to get into that gutter because it could be sludgy and we could lose control if it's a wet day, you see. Lot the paint starting to appear, so what does that suggest? Yeah, and a junction, so more paint, more danger. So we're going to turn right at the end. Take the immediate left if you could. Can you see it there? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, please. I thought you were talking about right here. So we need to budget for the fact that we're not going to speed up much in this road, don't we? Yeah. Man's Lane. I don't know if that's a good sign or what. Good positioning around there. Look out for potholes on these sort of roads as well. But I mean, I can't always avoid them, right? If you can't. Not always. I mean, you're better to go over a pothole than have a crash on you or yeah. hit somebody or, you know. So we've got to use best judgment. So just if, if it's safe to slow down then? Yeah, treat them as a hazard. I mean, if you have to treat it as a meeting situation, mm -hmm. you know, let's say it was a park car, mm -hmm. you don't want to crash into the car either, would you? Because the thing is, what can potholes do? I thought that was a little ferret or something then, I did. Uh, damage the tyre suspension. And yeah, yeah. Sure what else. Crack the wheel. Yeah. Throw the tracking off. Am I going to slow here? It right? can puncture the tyre. Let's get a little closer and let's let's analyse it. I think the gear's good. Let's ease off. He's 
going uphill, so he's going to slow quite a lot. Look out. I can't see anything, so I wouldn't know where to Exactly. Exactly. So keep this gap in case he falls off. <laughs> and we don't want to squish him, do we? <laughs> so tick over's good here. I think that's why people get really close, because they don't use tick over. I have my foot slightly on the gas, though, because we're going uphill. You don't have to, necessarily. So if you needed to take it off, you could. But it's not wrong either what you're doing. Yeah, no, probably not, right? I wouldn't yet. What we could do, if it's clear enough, is you can position over slightly. You can always position back, can't you? Back there, you could see enough of the road ahead to do it. Uh, it looks like a junction to me. Just because of the way the road's curved inwards, you know? Just easing off here, just momentarily. There could be a car overtaking a cyclist at the side. Which side of the road would they be in? They'd be in ours, wouldn't they? So, and they, that was way too quick, wasn't it? So thank God we're slowing up. Don't go back on the gas, cover the brake, cover the clutch. Keep reasonably close to this. As the view starts coming, start feeding the power back in, checking your mirrors, make sure nothing's overtaking. Again, this might not be your chosen route, but in your driving career it will come up. Sat navs can sometimes take you these ways. Again, easy enough, can't see ahead, can we? You can see a green hedge in front. Road position is really good. You could sound the horn if you're unsure. So what's the use of the horn for then? So alert movement. That's it. And if it was dull that you thought you could reflect, you could use a flash of headlights. I'm here. Alert them of your presence again use of the flashing headlights. So, so it's quite okay to go a bit quicker until there's someone. It's look, yeah. As long as the road's wide enough, it seemed like it was narrowing a bit. Mm -hmm. There's no point accelerating to have to brake, so you've got to sort of weigh that up in terms of eco driving as well. So we've got some signs ahead, what are they saying? Short okay. Cows. Got a sharp right bend, yeah, somebody might have left the gate open. So we've got a sharp right bend. Can you see the bend? Yeah, got the arrows, haven't we? So let's make sure we're positioned on approach and that we're in gear. So I'd go second. It looks, it looks terribly sharp. That's it. Potato pit lanes. Why are road names around here? <laughs> Makes sense. The engine brake is doing a good job for us here. We're giving the warning that I see your foot on the brake, sort of. So it's not one big. Yeah. Just in case you need it. And if you want to let it know that you're not going to be speeding up, sometimes they give a brake signal. So they'll know in their mind they're not expect. Uh, narrowed all of a sudden, didn't it? That nowhere to get out here because it's built up at the side. You couldn't even swerve. You'd end up do. You'd end up go. Ended up. I guess that's what the cars have been doing here. Yeah, you'd end up on your roof, I think, if you turned up that, you'd be upside down. So, we've got a junction coming up on the left, so a car could get it wrong and pull out on us. So be extra vigilant. Speed's good, looking ahead we can see. So we'd up the speed a little, third gear. But by the time we reach the end, by the time we reach this wooden post, I'd be off the revs. Why is that? Exactly. So we need to only go as fast as we can see to be clear, which isn't very far at the moment. Bear in mind we'd see roofs and helmets, things coming up, so we don't have to see the complete floor, you know, in a bit to keep the traffic moving. See, but what I keep thinking is, wouldn't the car behind me be like getting frustrated that I'm going this slow? But I feel like it's, I don't feel like it's too slow. Do you okay. feel like it's too slow? No, but I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, that's, there's always that. I didn't see the car tailgating or positioning round yeah. much, did you? I mean, they're, they're the characteristics of something that's getting The black one before that was a bit close. Yes. But, you, you know, you, I think you've just got to be really strong in your beliefs there and just say, well, actually, well, I no. guess it's safer better than annoying someone. And if, if they are going to drive out, they might, they might be better in front of you rather than behind you. Mm -hmm. The 
that's something they don't overtake in a dangerous place and put you at risk. I think sometimes you've got to accept that we can't control everything. And that's why it's important that we do speed up in the middle bits, you know, so we don't aid frustration. It's a good question, to be fair. Now, a bit of an advantage if there's a car in front, why is that? It's a bit of a, a, a bit of an advantage if the car's in front. Oh, we can see from what they're doing if there's like, mm. like their brake lights or whatever uh, change, whatever position. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Do you know what a passing place is? Yeah, the, almost like a layby. Yeah, sometimes not. It's just purposely for if there's two car oncoming cars. And that's it. Sorry about that. Real life driving. <laughs> Fast driver pulling on to anything behind? Okay, so sorry to interrupt your video there. I just wanted to offer you something a little extra. If you're looking for new driver insurance, we have got a list at the bottom of insurers who specialize in new drivers, okay? So I just wanted to offer you a little bit extra value. If you are looking for new driver insurance, maybe you've got your test coming up and you're just thinking about well, who am I gonna get to insure me? Well, probably the best way to look initially is to compare many. We've got some companies that specialise in new driver insurance as well, so just take a look, click the link below the video description. Anyway, back to the video, hope you're getting some good value. Cheers. Good, nicely getting up speed there, plenty of conviction with it, like you mean it. 60, right? Exactly. Keep slightly more left rather than right on this bend. Ahead, interfere, or block it into sync, or if you want. Because otherwise, your position will look like that car in front, do you see it? Mm -hmm. uh, which could suggest you're about to turn right or, or rather take the car in front, and things like that, if, if there's anything in front. I don't know why I do that, maybe one of my arms is heavier. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because you sat on the right, aren't you, remember, in the car? It's a common one, that is. If you watch the general public drive, you'll see that now end, people hugging the right. Mm -hmm. I think it's a subconscious thing that just, I don't know, it's, but it's something I come across all the time. Learner drivers as well, so it's, it's in them as well. Could he step on the road, do you think? fairly steady actually but, I, but if, if it was somebody a bit more vulnerable or a couple of people walking I generally would give them you know just in case they step sideways or fall or yeah so it's like the bends were saying when you can't see we'll prepare for the unexpected so in, in, if, if, if it does happen fine we've already allowed we've already made provisions for it are they close to their turn Let's put that power back on or else we'll have a car behind getting a bit close or that red one pulling out on us. That's it.
are everywhere. Mm. It's just spotting them. But I mean, you always see them. Mm. But it goes, well, yeah, that's the thing. I noticed them before, but I didn't connect to them. Yes, exactly. It's actually interpreting it, isn't it? Yeah. The information. residential roads as well sometimes so it's something I think it could... might be uh, me just not wanting to hold people up okay when really I should just be safe so I need to get that out of my head I guess be confident as you as a driver you know mm. because often the people who are insinuating that by driving close to you aren't they're usually actually the bad drivers exactly yeah so two wrongs don't make a right and all that stuff yeah, I guess I should just do what I know is right. Yeah. Obviously judge whatever else is going on. What we got coming up? Cool, turn left. Get second gear early, so brake, 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 so you can't see. Second gear, clutch up, but no gas, just clutch up. Keep braking. Keep looking. Keep moving. So I reckon if you'd have gone later, you'd have probably ended up stopping to have, to have a decide there, yeah. to have a look. Because it's second, it's not slow, it's not fast, you've got momentum, it's easy to just carry carry on through. Mm. I know you can do mini roundabouts, you know, I know, you know, I didn't have to guide you there, but I'm no, trying to... No, actually, uh, I hate mini roundabouts, do I always feel like I struggle with them. <laughs> we'll turn left at the mini roundabout. Keep that, cl keep that clutch up for as long as possible. Okay, fair enough. Clutch down if you need. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no worries. Don't accelerate, come off at the top of the hill. You might not need as much brakes, really steep downhill. So you said forward planning. Forward planning with gears and uh, lack of acceleration. We're going to follow this road to the end and then turn right. do a downhill rolling start here. Have you ever done a downhill rolling start? Yeah. yeah. I am just, I'm still on the clutch, but kind of more controlling with the brake. I'll tell you in a minute. I guess that's for more steeper roads. You can just move off in second. Oh, in uh, second? Yeah, and just get going in second. Because the momentum of the hill makes the car oh. roll and then you just engage second into it. I'll, I'll, we'll talk about it uh, when it's appropriate. We'll go ahead here, second exit. Looked like it was on two wheels, didn't it, coming round? Cool, and then we'll go 
Bogo City Centre at the next roundabout. So look at the extra city centre. Which lane? That one. Yeah. That was a trick question. No, no, no. <laughs> it's second exit, okay. So you wouldn't. Oh, but it does. Slightly, 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 every single one of them. So you've got to break the mould and be uh, the driver of the. Uh, what's it? Somebody said to me the other week, the driver of the sh the driver of the train or something. These are just carriages, aren't they? Being pulled because they're not thinking yeah. for themselves. Clutch down here because these are going to break. It's all the way down, right? All the way down. Just keep it down. When you lift the clutch back up, down set gas. Just clutch up one, just slowly one, two. Because the car's already got momentum, you can just engage into it. You don't need the power mm -hmm. for the initial lift off. Mm -hmm. But now I do need to go If you want to go faster, yeah. And you could, because they're not, oh, I wouldn't do that. Oh, well, because they're not speeding up, you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're not braking, which is a good thing, which is why I would lift the clutch up. Yeah. But like you said, about forward planning earlier, I think. Yeah, because I was usually told to just match the speed. 
yeah and as simple as that it's not very advanced it's not very and that's why you've come here isn't it to get these extra now I've been a bit guilty in the past of leaving massive gaps I think that could frustrate people but I think you just got to get it just right you know so that you haven't got to keep messing around braking because remember every time you brake what does that do to fuel consumption sorry it's wasting your fuel yeah so it wear and tear on the brakes as well plus effort plus you've got to help the, the car behind brakes any sign of brake lights ahead. Coming on like dominoes, aren't they? Backing up. So if you come off your gas now. Am I not moving too big of a gap? No. Because we'll because when they brake in a minute we'll keep rolling. Yeah, but I feel like I'm gonna stop now. You won't. Just add a little bit more gas so the gap doesn't get bigger. Keep centre. You'll see them on this side if you watch them. Look how close they kick in. They have to keep braking. Look, that that, that defender's going to break in a minute. Oh no, it's not. You can almost, if you read it, you can predict it all. What could catch up down the middle in slow moving traffic? Sorry, I mean wouldn't. <laughs> Never know, do you? So if these do something weird, if these break, or we haven't got a rack to sell suddenly, we can mm -hmm. give the car behind pre-warning. Plus we keep rolling instead of mm -hmm. stopping. Mm -hmm. stopping now when the cars start to leave you a little bit, you could consider a second, but you've got to think, where are they actually going? Are they speeding up to a red light? Well, there's red lights now. Exactly. So we don't want the gap to be too big that if it turns to green we'd miss it. Mm -hmm. We want it to be just moderate based on. So what would go second? But no gas though. Lights are just turn green, yeah? But I come off the clutch, right? Off the clutch. Yeah. That's it. And start. It's just right, isn't We're it? We're probably really? gonna get the next green out. Yeah. So just following these cars so we don't put ourselves in contention of missing it. Mm -hmm. Oh you stopped anyway. Although yeah, but you quick cars far I mean. Yeah, use middle. Check your right mirror before your position. What's the reason for that on this type of road, of this particular type of traffic? What's, what could Someone be coming? Someone may be coming in or motorbikes. Coming down, yeah. Move, uh, moving lines last second. Mm -hmm. What I find is that takes a lot of the stress out of it all, because you're just moving all the time. It's not as, let's face it, traffic's a bit boring, isn't it? Yeah. Just makes it a bit easier, safer, economical. You okay with? Yeah, I know. We're, we're going to my house, right? Yeah. yeah. Do you want directions, or are you good? No, I know. From okay, good. It's about that period where I start knowing where I'm going. Yeah.
you know if it's second? How should you? What should you be feeling for? The rumbling? No. No, I don't stand on it. You know, when you're in neutral, you're going to go left from neutral. So that's why it's so important to get to the neutral. No, oh, it's no, neutral. no, I don't mean the position of the gear, but the speed. Oh, okay. These speeds are slightly different. What to select? Yeah. Yeah. Carry on driving with that little bit of steer you've done, that'll help us just 